So you're familiar with the food chain, you're familiar with herbivores and carnivores, and we're going to use a wildlife analogy uh, because of language that was brought up in the Knapp Commission. So the Knapp Commission report on police corruption described two types of corrupt officers, and they specifically use this language, meat eaters and grass eaters. And the meat eaters are police officers who aggressively misuse their police power for personal gain. In our analogy, that's the lion over here, right? We're thinking the more ferocious, the more violent, the more dangerous. Those are people who, again, aggressively misuse their police powers for personal gain. So in the hierarchy of all police corruption, the more violent, the more serious, the more intentional, that would be at the top. That would be the meat eaters. The grass eaters, over here in our example, this little gazelle, are the officers who were more passive in their corruption. They accepted payoffs um, that were offered in the course of their police duties, but they didn't necessarily seek out opportunities to commit crime. So in a, in a wildlife analogy, we've got meat eaters and we've got grass eaters, and we're going to point like which one is more serious in police corruption. And that's what's interesting about this conversation because it's actually the grass eaters that are more likely to be the problem for us. Despite committing less serious acts, the commission identifies the grass eaters as the heart of the problem simply because grass eaters were present in such large numbers that they had the effect of making corruption respectable. It was commonplace. It was normal. They encouraged a code of silence in which anyone who violated it would be branded a traitor. And so by making it normal, accepted, even respectable within the department, it allowed corruption to, uh, to remain unchecked uh, and, and worsen and allowed meat eaters to kind of go about their business. Um, so when we, when we talk about corruption, we don't generally think about it in that way, that it's really this baseline set of behaviors uh, in a department's culture that will define what is acceptable, what's not very early on. And it's generally the very bottom, low-level types of corruption that if allowed to uh, allowed to uh, infiltrate a department uh, will lead to much bigger problems.